Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, a devil, not the devil, blind and dumb. So he couldn't see, nor could he speak. And he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. All the people were amazed. And said, is not this the son of David? True. He is the line of David, Matthew chapter 1. But when the Pharisees heard it, at no time do you ever see the Pharisees or Sadducees or the scribes pleased when Jesus heals. When Jesus do, does anything good, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Pharisees are always in opposition. Pilate said because of envy. The signs are for the Jews to believe this fellow, Jesus, does not cast out devils. Well, what's he do? But by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. Beelzebub is the lord of the flies. He's the prince, and as it says, he is one of the leaders, one of Nearly Satan himself. So what the Pharisees are saying is. Jesus is the devil. And the devil. Is casting out devils. Through the devil. He's the prince of the devils. So the devils are going to listen to him. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. You cannot have a kingdom, a power, within that power, with that kingdom. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. You cannot have it last any further. America is not going to stand any further because she's fighting within herself. You've got people of all classes and decrees and beliefs fighting everybody else. A civil war. And if Satan to show you Beelzebub what they were thinking. If Satan cast out Satan, that's exactly what they were saying by Beelzebub. He divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Now look, look what Jesus said. Satan has a kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, he offered Jesus that kingdom is the world. And if the world's going to go against the world, it's not going to stand. Now, what ends the world? It's not the world versus the world, the devil versus the devil. It's God versus Satan, and God wins. So according to the Bible, it is God, Jesus Christ, besides the fact that the Jehovah Witnesses teach, that it is God power over the devils, not the devil over the devil, that conquers the devil in the end. Thus showing you that God and the devil are not one. They're enmity. Whereas the Pharisees were saying, Beelzebub, Jesus, He's one in one with the devil. Well, the Mormons teach that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. What more can you get? A bunch of Pharisees in Utah. 
You can't have two brothers not be the same. They got to have a common denominator, whether it be a mother or a father. And if Lucifer and Jesus are brothers, and it's not a mother, a queen, or mother of God, <laughs> that means Lucifer would have to came from the father. That ain't going to happen. That never happens. And Satan's kingdom does not stand. It will come to an end. And if I, now look with Jesus, and if I be Elzebub, No, by Beelzebub. If I conjure Beelzebub to cast out devils, whom you say, by whom do your children cast them out? So there are Jewish folks, and we'll come across them, Lord willing, in the book of Acts, they're out there exorcism, the Catholic Church calls it, devils. And Jesus said, okay, if I do it by Beelzebub, the power of Satan, how do your children do it? Therefore they shall be your judges. Do you realize another thing of the Bible is God will stand judgment on Judgment Day, the Great White Throne Judgment, the Judgment Seat of Christ. He's going to sit there. Man is going to judge man. The Bible says saints, Christians are going to judge angels. Your neighbors are going to judge you. You're going to judge your neighbors. You're going to judge your pastor. Your pastor. Everybody's going to judge everybody. And the books are going to be open. And that these Pharisees are saying, well, you do it by Beelzebub. Well, when the judges come and judgment sets forth, let's ask your children. Because evidently the children of the Jews are doing it through Beelzebub. They have made a pact with the devil as some have made a pact with the Satan to get a, a, a political position in the world, Matthew 4. There are some people here have made a pact with Satan saying, hey listen, you let me have this little conjuring power over your devils. A little make-believe world. I'll do whatever you... And this is the realm of magic. This is the realm of religion. Can a Catholic exercise a devil or demon? Well, if they do it in the power of the devil, yes. And it's not really exercise. It's a performance. And all the devil's doing is say, listen, guys, his, his army, his people, just back off, let them do their show. We're going to do no harm to you, and we'll make them look like they're somebody. And you're going to see this, and if you read the book of Acts, you'll see it played out. But when they come across the real Jesus, the real power of God and his apostles, the tides turn. Encounter to act, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God is coming upon you, and that's been announced ever since John the Baptist, which has been rejected, and Jesus Christ himself now totally, eject, uh, uh, totally rejected by at least the religious class of the Jews. This is the last step for the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. We'll see that in a moment. And we'll see how the Catholic Church plays their part. So, if Jesus is casting out devils, and he is God, 
and that John warns us in 2 John, his epistle, about the Antichrist. We're not even to listen, we're not even to wish them a good afternoon, a good day, or a good night. If Jesus is God, not Satan, then he's casting out these devils. The power of the Holy Spirit. Or if it's just the devil casting out the devil, well, in the long run, the devil is doing more harm than good for himself. And Satan, Lucifer, who became Satan, is so engrossed in power and hunger over Jehovah God, and now even over his own dominion, he's going to ruin his kingdom. Because if we believe what the Bible stance is, that Jesus is God, these devils are being cast out by the Holy Spirit. No question about it. Now we just shot three religions out the window. Or else, how can one enter a strong man's house? The strong man being the devil. The one that enters is Jesus. Jesus has come into the world. The world is the devil. Even the Baptist church don't believe that today. Spoil his goods. How do you spoil the goods of the strong man? You go out there and preach the gospel. In hopes and prayer that the servants of Satan will get saved, turn from the power of Satan to light. But the church has failed where it's gathered the ways of the world and the ways of Satan. And that people are not getting saved today. They're saying a prayer. They're doing it. And the church, look, oh, look at the number. And the church has been amused and abused to the lies of Satan. That the fact is, Satan's kingdom, as far as the lost souls, stands as it is. There will be people of Satan's kingdom. They will die. They will go into the devil's hell thinking they were saved because the church stepped in the ways of Satan and not God, the Holy Spirit. God has already told us. God has already told us. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say have a fellowship. He didn't say have chicken dinners. He didn't say have VBS. He didn't say, you know, befriend them. He told the Jews you are the sauce. He told the Jews you are the light. But the church went Jewish. The church went Matthew. In great error. Except the first bind the strong man. And Satan will be bound one day. <clears throat> not by the church. Not by the pastor. I believe it's Michael. I believe Michael bonds in for a, or a, a, a one, an angel. They may be, I think a strong angel in Revelation. Will bind the devil for a thousand years. Then he will spoil his house. It will be the thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't think the devil is strong. Let me give you an illustration. We'll move on because there's stuff we got to talk about. You take a, a Christian saved with MS. Memory's gone. Health is gone. Person's concern is, you know, I may forget my child and my, my grandchildren's name. My church, they're helping me to memorize scripture. And the Jehovah Witnesses come over 
pay the bills. Oh, we're just having Bible study. We don't want you to be a Jehovah Witness. Believe me. Trust me. Believe me. We're just trying to be friendly. We're just trying to get you with the Bible. You don't believe in the same Jesus in my Bible. That's Satan coming in. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters the board. And this verse, this is one of them verses, you know, quietly, quietly quoted. Well, you know, they're not against us, they're for us. Okay. He's not with his against. You have not been in any public ministry. Because there could be people, there are three atmospheres of any public witness. Whether you knock on doors, you pass out gospel tracts, you individually talk to people, you street preach, whatever it is. You got people who hate it. You got people who love it. And you'll get people, who cares? The people with, who cares, you, you're going to say they're with me, with Jesus? You're either going to love, you're going to hate, or you're going to, I don't care. In actuality, the ones that hate it still reject, but they just don't, you know, don't lump them with, don't lump their, I don't care attitude, oh, they're for Jesus. Then we must. Then we can chalk. We can chalk that one up as saved. No. He that gathers not with me scatters the board. So what do you do in the church age when you have a Christian, honestly saved, born again, and he doesn't do anything, nothing for Jesus Christ for the rest of his life, dies and goes to heaven, and does nothing? And ends up with nothing at the judgment seat of Christ. Wherefore I say unto you. Now, 31 and 32, here's, here's the nugget of tonight. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Will God forgive all sins? Okay, Jesus just said, here's a sin that... Let's reread on. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, God, Jesus Christ, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven, neither in this world, neither the worlds to come. Okay, what do you, God forgives every and all sins. What are you going to do with that verse if you run to Matthew? Christian, pastor, Sunday school teacher. There is no sin that God can't forgive. All right, let's run to Matthew 12, 31 and 32. There is a sin that God won't forgive. There it is. That's the trouble running to Matthew. Now, one other place. Mark. Mark chapter 3. Now we got to get this. Because this is very important. Because this is very tampered with. Mark 3.22 This is the danger running to the Gospels. Now let me give you number one headlight. Jewish. Christ has not died. He has not been buried. He has not risen from the dead. He's told the disciples before this, 
You go to the Jews. Don't even go to the Samaritans. And don't go to the Gentiles. There is no Christians. There is no church. And we're talking about the, the unpardonable sin tonight. Now the Roman Catholic Church says, I, me, Stiley, has committed the unpardonable sin. You say, well, what is that? When I go on the street, when I deal with somebody, and I am to them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, there is no other means of salvation but through Jesus Christ, that if I don't back down from that argument that only Jesus saves, I have committed an impartable sin that, well, he's always right. And he won't hunker down. He won't give in. He's thinking he's always right. That's what the that's what the, the Roman Catholic Church says the unpardonable sin is. And what they're trying to would be say to you, but they don't have enough guts. If you go against Mother Church, and if you would say the Mass can't save you, Mary can't save you, and you're going to stick to that, and you're going to go to the, to the to the burning faggots, you're going to go to the torture, you're going to go to the Inquisition, you're going to be tortured by Jesus. For Jesus, by the Catholic Church, that you will not renounce the Mass, you will not renounce Mary. That's the unpardonable sin. And as Mother Church, we damn you to hell. Anathema. And go check out the Council of, Church, the Council of Trent and all the anathemas. If you don't believe Mary is the, 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 the queen of heaven, a nap to you. If you don't believe in the mother church, a nap to you. If you don't believe in the mass is the blood and body of Jesus, a nap. What's an anathema for me? You ain't never going to go to heaven. That's the unpardonable sin of the Catholic Church. Now. Let's see what the impartable sin is of the Bible. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem. Does that give you a clue number one? Said he, Jesus, has a Beelzebub. He has by the prince of the devils cast out devils. Jesus has a devil and he's casting out the devils. That's what we already said in Matthew. In Jerusalem to Jews. He called them unto him and said unto them parables. How can Satan, there we go, cast out Satan? Boom. That's what they were calling Jesus. When you say that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers, you are saying Jesus is Satan. While you go marry your untold amount of wives, because not because you want to populate a planet, because you want to be in your sexual perversion. I read the other day, you know, oh, how Joseph Smith, you know, he was killed in prison. For, uh, no, he was killed in prison by the men's of the husbands of the wives he stole. They're already lightning, loosening history to be untold. Joseph Smith was an adulterer, killed by the husbands of the wives he committed adultery with. And the book of Proverbs says, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? And to, to the husband, and this is not the quote, uh, uh, quote in the verse, but to the husband that has been violated, there's no gift in the world that will appease that husband of the damage you did. And if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. Kingdom, house. If your church is divided between red carpet, blue carpet, piano, or organ, it's going to fold. It's going to crack. If Satan rises up against himself and to be divided, he cannot stand but has an end. He has an end. Because Satan has stood up against himself. Can you imagine what the real hell is like when you got the devils against the devils because they're just wicked and vile? It 
If the one third the angels turned on God, what makes you think they're not going to turn on the devil? Satan turns on the world in Revelation 12 when he is finally kicked out of heaven by Michael and his archangel. He's cast to the earth, and the Bible says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth or world, I forget which one. Satan comes down and he's angry. Angry who? His own people. You didn't go with Satan with the power of victory. Well, we lost. I'm going to take it out on you. Satan ain't going to be your friend in hell. No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods and set. He will first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house. Barely, I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of man, Adam, and blasphemies, whether, excuse, blasphemies wherewith soever they shall bless. Whatever sin, whatever blasphemy shall be forgiven unto you. All right, right there, we stop. We're in the church age. That's not a period. That's a colon. Now we throw the monkey wrench into the church age doctrine if you want to go run to the gospels but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost shall never be forgiveness never be forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation stop right there for a moment that's a colon not a period stop right there for a moment there are people today who are genuinely saved they're going to heaven just as much as me or you that are saved and they fear they have been taught. They have read. They have come on some kind of interest that they have committed the unpardonable sin. Now, I told you what, what the unpardonable sin is of the Catholic Church. There are unpardonable sins of all religions of all different types. But the scriptures itself tell you what's going on. Number one, number one, number one. What have I been telling you all the times, especially since we came into Matthew? It is Jewish. There's no church age yet. Not once does Paul speak about a sin that God can never forgive. But Matthew and Mark teach it. There it is. So what is the conflict? The unpardonable sin is because they said, Mark tells you, he has an unclean spirit. When Jesus is going about, go back to read Jerusalem, and he's doing the healing, he's casting out the devils, Jewish people. The unpardonable sin is for the Jews to say he is the devil. And the power that he has, which we read in Matthew. Now, in Mark 3.30, he has an unclean spirit. Remember that. Go back to Matthew 12. Look at verse 31. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven him. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither the world, neither in world to come. There are Sadducees, there are scribes, there are Pharisees, there are Jews, that are living in the time of Jesus, that their fate was sealed of hell. Because when Jesus did his earthly ministry, the work of the Holy Ghost, that's the work of, don't go Pentecostal on me. The work of the Holy Ghost is the power that the devils fled, the power that the fevers fled. 
The power that the blind were open. The power that the dumb were able to speak. is when you said that power, the Holy Spirit power in Jesus is Satan. That is the unpardonable sin. Now, I said the Mormons say that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. That's the unpardonable sin. No, it's not. Because Mark told us, Jesus has told us, the only time that the unpardonable sin could be committed is when Jesus is on this earth doing his earthly ministry. The unpardonable sin cannot be committed today. Let's take a modern Bible verse. He thought I was going to say Bible. 1 John 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, no loophole, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is today all sins are forgiven. There is not one sin that Christ cannot forgive you of. While he was on this earth, while he was doing his earthly ministries, if you saw him performing miracles before Jews, Jews require a sign. If you said that is Jesus working by or through Satan himself, Beelzebub, you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. That is the sin that damns you. And it cannot be done today cannot be performed today because Jesus is not in his earthly work. Now, there'll be some people, you know, let's say you go to a faith healing and you say that guy's doing up there by the power of the devil. He could be. And if he's doing it by the power of the devil, which is possible, that's not the Holy Spirit. If you go to church and, and you say the power the, the power of the Holy Spirit moves to the church for people to get saved, and it's actually genuine power of the Holy Spirit, people are getting saved, and you say, well, you know, they're doing something devil which is wicked, and it's Satan. That's not Jesus doing the work. Because if somebody goes to the altar, somebody professes to be saved, and they just said a prayer, any aspect of the of a devil in that worship, because the devil's in the church, and ain't 100% Holy Spirit like Jesus. There's no devil in Jesus. Jesus' work was 100% Holy Spirit. Somewhere along the line, your pastor is going to do the work of the devil. And God. And the Holy Spirit. But he's going to be in the flesh, unlike Jesus. And there may be something you can say about your past. Well, you know, that, that was just a devil, worldly, fleshly thing. Oh, yes, okay, probably. The Bible says Christians are to judge things. Well, when you see the work of Jesus, or you could see, not you can't see it today, that's not a thing. That's a person. When Jesus did his miracles, that's a person. The third member of the Trinity. And there were people running around Israel. They were performing their acts by the devil. But Jesus said who he was. Jesus spoke of who he was. Jesus spoke exactly what he was. He is God. And you don't dare challenge the work of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, don't tell me that the Holy Spirit is going to work through the prostitute Roman Catholic Church to be an anathema. Uh -huh. Not when everything or majority of the Catholic Church teachings defiles the scriptures. Don't tell me that your Baptist church, oh, you know, you go against the pastor, you go against our church. And no, 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 no. I can tell you right now, your Easter and your Christmas are pagan, are the works of the devil and the flesh. You're not fully Jesus. You're not fully God. Jesus is. So today, don't worry about doing the unpardonable sin. Because there will be times, a, a, I guarantee, every saved Christian will have a moment they're reading their Bible, they are praying to God, they may be singing a hymn, they may be listening to a message, they may be meditating on God, and Satan will come up into your ear and whisper something blasphemous. I have. I've read my Bible, and I had, to, oh, I had this devil come down. How can you believe that so? And your mind, oh, wait a minute. I've been in prayer where the devil comes up. Maybe the devil or the devils comes up. You really think he's going to hear you? You really think he cares? You may be in, a, in, in church. You may be hearing a great message. And you're sitting there and the devil comes up to you. They got four cans of beans for a dollar at the store. Don't you want to stop at the store on the way home? Hey, wouldn't it be great if you, if you went here and got this? You know, remember, you got to get gas. You might even have a moment that somebody walks to church in a message and, oh, they're not really doing it. This is Listen, that's the devil. That's the devil working your flesh. That's your flesh working. Jesus never had those moments. Jesus and the Holy Spirit never had those moments. They were always genuine. And when you took those genuine moments and you said that was Satan. And they had to be serious for Jesus to make such a statement that the, whoever they are, when we read in Matthew, when we read in Mark, whoever they are, they are in hell today without any hope. Because they said the work of the Holy Spirit is the devil. Not a devil. The prince of the devils. Satan himself. Because listen, go back to Matthew. Read what Jesus said. Read the context. Find it. Okay. Verse 24. Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So here's the devils. Here's the prince of all the devils. Jesus said, verse 26, Satan. Who's Satan? He's the devil of the devils. He's Satan of Satan. He is the Lucifer. <laughs> And Jesus said, what you were thinking is, you said that my work is Satan. You know, there have been people who have been involved in the, the Charlie Mason, the Satanic Church movement and all that. And they got the tattoos and they did, the, you know, the, the, the pentagrams, the upside, and they, and upside. They did all that. And then they met Jesus. And they got saved. There have been Roman Catholic priests and nuns who came out and got saved. Are you saying that today there never could uh, ever be saved? Their sins could never be forgiven? No. See, that was the one of the dangers of the Jews. Especially this time of Jesus. Especially this time. Of, this is why you don't go running to Matthew. You got the living, breathing, walking, talking, sleeping. Jesus wept doing all these miracles. 
Oh, you know, if, if I was buried, buried there during that time and Jesus was on the cross, I would have shouted for Jesus. You the only one? Peter wasn't there. John didn't say nothing in support of Jesus. What did John say? Jesus said, this is my mother, and this will be your mother, and my, my woman, this is your... <laughs> and that was it of John. Where's Matthew? Where's the rest of the disciples? Where's all the people that healed Jesus? No, 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 no. If you would have been there in the time of Jesus, you would have the same attitude that they had when Jesus recorded the Gospels by the Holy Spirit. You would have been none the better. So put yourself back in the church age and get yourself out of the Gospels. Now, in the Gospels, there are many scriptures you can use. You can spiritualize. You can, some of them, you doctrine. But you better walk carefully. That is the unpardonable sin. It can only have been done when Jesus was alive and doing his miracles. No Christian can do the unpardonable sin today. You can repent of it. You can sin and you can confess that sin and God will forgive and cleanse you. Why? Because you don't have to live and breathe and walk and talk in Jesus. And you know, you know, you know what the church, you know what the church does. I'm going to say, you know how the church imitates Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'll, I'll give you one moment to think about. It. I'll give you one moment of silence to think about how how do they imitate the, the Bible? You think of it? I'll tell you how they really put you, try to put you back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The church, I like to make an announcement. We're going to have a Holy Land tour. We're all going to have a plan to go to Israel and walk the same footprints that Jesus walked, that the Catholics tell us, or the Arabians. Show me in the Bible where the Christians are to go back to Jerusalem, go back to Israel. I read where, where Jesus, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, Jerusalem, Samaria, the outer parts of the world. You know what happens when Paul went back to Jerusalem? He ended up in jail and going to Rome. We Gentiles need to be witnessing to the Gentiles, praying for the Jews. 